boobs, tits, breasts, titties, puppies, tatas, jugs, knockers, and let's not forget, fun bags. That last one was definitely made up by men, just saying. There are literally hundreds of words that we use in the English language to describe a woman's chest. And today, I am going to be making a bra, but not any kind of over-the-shoulder boulder holder. No, I am going to be making the iconic 1950s bullet bra. Have I ever made underwear before? No, I haven't. In fact, I once tried to make a corset and that was a complete fail. So why am I creating a bullet bra, you may be asking? Well, two reasons. Number one, I have an upcoming 1950s project which I would like to use a bullet bra within that silhouette. And also because of the fact that I made the Wonder from WandaVision episode one cosplay just recently and frankly, it just, it, it isn't sitting right. And I'm wondering if the bullet bra will fix that. And reason number two is pure curiosity. Let's be real, when we're looking at a bullet bra with 21st century eyes, they look a little bit hmm, ridiculous. And frankly, if you're not new to my channel, then you already know that I love a little bit of ridiculousness in my life. So let's talk about making it. I did a quick search on the internet and straight away I came across a free downloadable printable pattern by Vavum Vintage. So along with the free pattern, there was also written instructions of how to make it. And frankly, there was only four pieces and I thought, hmm, I could probably make this. So of course I went to my stash and I pulled out this fabric, which is a lovely polyester satin, <laughs> but it should work perfectly for this brassiere adventure. So I guess the very first thing we've got to do is we've got to print off the pattern and cut this bad boy out. Let's go. Oh. pieces are now cut out and one thing that I noticed was nowhere on the pattern pieces or in the instructions is there any kind of discussion about grain lines so all I did was that I put the grain line I, I did it on the straight where I thought it made sense so for example in the center seam for the cups and for the back closure so that makes sense that's what I'm doing Hopefully it all works out. Uh, the other thing that I noticed was that I couldn't find, maybe I was reading too quickly, but I couldn't find what kind of length this was for. So the one that I printed out was the C cup. I know that there's also a double D cup as well, but it didn't tell me exactly like the the kind of sizing in terms of who it's made for. So I'm just cutting out, hoping for the best. If it's not big enough, well, then I'll figure that out when I get to it. Uh, but we'll see. I think maybe it was 38 inches or 42 inches. I think I saw those numbers as I was reading quickly. I should really, you know, stop and read things. I realize. Oh, well, living my best life. G'day and welcome to the sultry voiceover. What I'm doing here is pinning the two pieces of the booby cup together and then I passed it through my sewing machine. Okay, so the two booby cups have been completed and already you can kind of see just how like freaking pointy they're gonna be. Oh, this is insane. Anyway, the instructions on the blog says that the next step is to use pinking shears to go around the edges. And funnily enough, I have these in my collection, which were, according to the box, were my mum's pinking shears when she was like primary school, high school. Uh, so I tell you what, talk about historically accurate sewing uh, equipment here. These would have been uh, probably late 50s early 60s so that's a lot of fun and they still work i love them 
Uh, and these were actually made in, well, <laughs> what would have been West Germany. So that's always fun as well. Okay, so the next section is a little weird. Uh, so it tells me to find this kind of center point of the boob. Uh, so like the top of the point, top of the mountain, if you will. And then I need to then sew in a circle, like around and around and around to help create the shape, I think. It seems weird, I'm just, yeah, you know what, I'm just, I'm just gonna go for it. So, wish me luck! For those who suffer from motion sickness, maybe look away for the next 10 seconds or so. This circular motion was hard to do at first, as it was super sharp turning. But after the first couple circular passes, it got much easier. With that complete, it was time to join the booby cups together to crystallize their union. I did this as a French seam because anything that is French makes it more appealing. That and also the instructions told me to do so. When two had become one, it was now time to start on the underbust front band. This was the only layer of doubled up in polyester satin. I began with pinning and sewing the long, straightish bottom edge. And of course, I gave it a good iron. Next, I pin one layer to the bottom of the booby cups, right sides together, and of course, I sewed it. Then I flipped the other side up, folded over the top edge, and pinned it before I whip-stitched it into place. Then I folded and pinned the hem of the bottom of the back band pieces and sewed those down before attaching them to the front of the bra with another French seam. So I've put the straps on and all that's left to do is to do the seam around the top and add the elastic and the closures. But yeah, this is no lie the weirdest thing I think I've ever made. And I've made some pretty weird stuff. I mean, it's just, they're so pointy. Like I could direct traffic with this. So one thing that I learned was on Miss Lady Lace's video about bullet bras that I watched is that the kind of points can be stuffed to kind of keep that shape. So I think that's what I'm going to do. But for now, my battery is flashing at me, so I think this is a good place to stop for the time being. And I might get into PJs and just relax a bit. Let's do that. I have finished my bath, I am now in my pyjamas, and the last thing I think I'll do before I call it a night is I'm going to do the kind of hem around the top and the sides of the bra. The, the sides actually don't have any, any finishing tips that I could see on the actual instructions, but I think I'll just turn it as a half inch anyway. So that's what it's calling for, so I'll change it to half inch and I'll go around, pin everything and sew it all down. And then tomorrow we'll come back and we will do the closures and the elastic cause that sounds scary. And I think I need a little bit more brain power than I have right now. So all I'm gonna do is I'm going to fold it in, I'm gonna pin it and then I'm gonna sew it. I won't sew it um, on camera because you've seen me do <laughs> enough of the other hemming. So let's just go ahead and pin it. All right, so for you it's been a couple of seconds, but for me it's been an entire week. The power of editing, right? Anyway, so today I'm going to finish off my bullet bra, and to do that what I need to do is I need to put the uh, clip at the back in, 
and I've done a quick measurement and this band actually will seem to fit me which is surprising but all right then and then I also need to put the uh, elastic in so that will be interesting I haven't done this before but I did look and I saw that on vintage bras the actual kind of like circle thing that is normally in the back of like modern bras is actually at the front and on the point here so I think I'll do that as well so yeah let's do that today and hopefully I'll get some photos at the end of it all oh oh the dogs are excited. And with the last threading of elastic and sewing it into place, the bullet bra is now ready to be worn and seduce men. And surprise! You didn't actually think I was going to be in my underwear on film for you guys, did you? Because that ain't this kind of show. So luckily I had a wonderful volunteer in my headless friend here and she said she was happy to uh, show off the bullet bra and as you can see it's very pointy however it's a little bit limp shall we say so i actually learned a really cool trick from miss lady lace and her video in regards to bullet bras and that was to stuff the ends so what i've done is i've cut out these two pieces of the same satin as this it's a lightweight satin so it scrunches up pretty nicely and all we're going to do is we're going to stuff the ends with it i feel so naughty doing this and with that you can kind of see that the shape is much better now keep in mind that my friend here is somewhat a little bit mm, flat chested ish uh so when real boobs are in there it, it's a lot more solid shall we say so the next thing that i need to do is i'm going to do a side by side comparison of me wearing this bra with an authentic 1956 girdle that i have in my collection don't ask me how i've got it i don't actually remember how i've got it but it's there so i'm gonna use it Put those together and I'm going to do a side-by-side -side comparison of this with my normal underwear wearing Wonder from Wonder Vision. Yep, that cosplay because I actually built that cosplay using a real vintage 1950s bodice pattern. And that way you can see the difference. So, roll the clips! that demonstrated the real difference between wearing modern underwear and 1950s underwear and the silhouette that it gives to that 1950s look. I'm still really uncomfortable by this. As always, I hope that you enjoyed today's video and you had a little bit of a laugh with me. If you would like to see more content from me, make sure you hit that subscribe button and ring the bell for notifications. And also, giving me a like and a little bit of a comment really helps me out with the algorithm. So make sure you do that before leaving. Alright, see you next time. Bye!